A warm greeting. Today is Thursday, July 10, 2025. This is meteorologist Ruben Garcia speaking. In the previous video, we talked about how sea surface temperature anomalies are across the Atlantic and how this may affect the cyclonic activity anticipated for this year. Additionally, I had the opportunity to discuss the most recent seasonal forecast according to the European model, in which the model continues projecting that cyclonic activity this year in the Atlantic should be near normal. And in recent days, other updates have come out from some global models, but more importantly, from two well-known expert groups in hurricane season forecasts, where they have reduced the cyclonic activity anticipated in the Atlantic, although they still expect a slightly more active than normal hurricane season. So in today's video, I will be analyzing sea surface temperature anomalies in both the equatorial Pacific and the Atlantic. I will also talk about the latest forecast of ENSO conditions, where the absence of El Nino continues to be forecast for the peak of the season. I will also discuss the updated forecast from the Tropical Storm Risk Group and also the much-anticipated forecast from the University of Colorado. And in the final minutes of the video, I will talk about some forecasts from other models that, in general, show us that the hurricane season may be a bit more active than normal, and fortunately, it seems that it will not be as active as the one we had last year. Before discussing the seasonal forecasts, I wanted to mention that the Atlantic region and the Pacific region, for the moment, remain quiet and no cyclonic development is expected during the next seven days, although eventually we will be paying attention to the northern Gulf of Mexico, where a low pressure could develop and perhaps find favorable conditions for development, as happened with Tropical Storm Chantal. Without further ado, let's begin by analyzing the sea surface temperature anomalies. There are two very important factors that we will be analyzing in this video. First, remember that in the equatorial Pacific region we continue with neutral ENSO conditions, meaning we have neither the La Nina phenomenon nor the El Nino phenomenon. And typically, in hurricane seasons where ENSO conditions are neutral, it tends to result in more cyclonic activity than normal. On the other hand, the North Atlantic also continues with sea surface temperatures that remain above normal, particularly in the subtropical zone and slightly warmer than normal across the main cyclonic development region. And now let's see how these factors have implications on the seasonal forecasts. First, I want you to see that NOAA just updated its forecast of ENSO conditions, where for the months of August, September, and October, it is estimated that there is over a 55% chance that ENSO conditions will remain neutral and almost a 40% chance that La Nina will develop. La Nina or neutral ENSO conditions usually favor cyclonic activity in the Atlantic, and this is one of the main factors for which we continue to anticipate more cyclonic activity than normal. If we look at the updated forecast from Tropical Storm Risk, you can see that they have reduced a bit the cyclonic activity they anticipate for this year. Now they project that 15 tropical storms, 7 hurricanes, and 3 major hurricanes will form, very close to the average of the last 30 years. So at least the tropical storm risk forecast has decreased the cyclonic activity and is expected to be near or slightly above normal. In their analysis, the University of Colorado mentions that one of the main factors for forecasting more cyclonic activity than normal is that the North Atlantic has sea surface temperatures on average above normal, including the main cyclonic development zone and the northeastern Atlantic area near the Canary Current, while the subtropical Atlantic region is also maintaining temperatures near historical record highs. In fact, they mention that in general, the distribution of warmer than normal temperature anomalies in the North Atlantic correlates quite well with cyclonic activity in the Atlantic. Although definitely what draws the most attention is that the subtropical Atlantic has very warm temperatures for the season, even warmer than the tropical Atlantic zone. And although this can cause storms and hurricanes to form in the subtropical Atlantic, on the other hand, it can also create slightly less favorable conditions for development between the Caribbean and Africa. Meanwhile, the University of Colorado notes that the main reason for slightly decreasing the cyclonic activity they anticipate is that during the month of June, wind shear in the Caribbean has remained stronger than normal, and this has a high correlation with the cyclonic activity expected for the peak of the season. However, they also comment that in the coming weeks, it is very likely that wind shear will begin to decrease, and therefore they continue projecting that cyclonic activity will be slightly above normal. And when the University of Colorado analyses different parameters that include some cyclonic activity projection models, analog years with what is expected for the peak of the season, on average, these parameters result in 19 tropical storms, 10 hurricanes, and 5 major hurricanes, which would represent a hyperactive season. However, due to wind shear that has remained higher than normal and also the very warm temperature anomalies in the subtropical Atlantic, this may help to suppress somewhat the activity that we would have otherwise expected. And mainly for these reasons, the forecast is slightly lower with 16 tropical storms, 8 hurricanes, and 3 major hurricanes. So at least the University of Colorado, like Tropical Storm Risk, 
has slightly decreased the anticipated cyclonic activity, which we can call a consensus. Another factor the University of Colorado mentions is that Saharan dust between the Caribbean and Africa has so far remained below normal, and this can have an effect of favoring cyclonic activity in the Atlantic. While on the other hand, they mentioned that in the Sahara Desert region in recent months, it has rained less than normal, and this is associated with less active seasons, but they also comment that important changes are anticipated during the coming weeks, and it may be that the Sahara Desert region sees more rainfall than normal during the coming months, and this could mean that strong tropical waves will emerge from Africa. And now let's look at the latest runs of the seasonal models. Let's start with the precipitation anomalies. According to the European model, you can see that in the main cyclonic development zone, the model is projecting rainfall near or slightly below normal, while it shows more rainfall than normal in the subtropical Atlantic region. This pattern would be associated with hurricane seasons that are near normal, particularly in the main cyclonic development zone, but may result in the formation of more storms in the subtropical Atlantic. This projection coincides with the ensemble of other European and Asian models, where in the main cyclonic development zone they also see precipitation near normal for the peak of the season, and more rainfall than normal for regions of the subtropical Atlantic and the northern Gulf of Mexico. Additionally, the ensemble of North American models has a very similar pattern, rainfall near or slightly below normal across the main cyclonic development zone, while more rainfall than normal across the northeastern Gulf of Mexico and the subtropical Atlantic zone. So I think the consensus we have is pretty obvious. In general, conditions would favor cyclonic activity above normal. However, the very warm temperatures in the subtropical Atlantic will likely cause cyclonic activity in the main development zone to be near normal, while we may possibly see more cyclone activity than normal in the North Atlantic, or specifically in the subtropical region. Still, remember that in general a near or slightly above normal hurricane season is expected, so it's important that we are all prepared for the peak of the season. And although in the coming weeks not much cyclonic activity is expected due to an unfavorable phase of the Madden-Julian oscillation, you can see that by early and mid-August, more favorable conditions seem to be arriving in the Atlantic, and perhaps a more active period of cyclonic activity will begin. Well, you already know that here at Hurricane Info I will continue to monitor any developments. In the coming days, I will record a video to talk about the possible development near the southeastern United States, and to stay informed during the rest of the season, I invite you to like this video. Also, don't forget to subscribe to the channel by clicking the red button and click the bell so you receive notifications when I record new videos. With this I say goodbye for now. I hope everyone has an excellent day. See you later.